So, Mr. Craycraft, you accepted the challenge of going to Raleigh, North Carolina this past summer and selling door-to-door -door for... Clear Defense Pest Control. Right. So, uh, talk to me about your experience. Well, we woke up. We didn't have to wake up till 11 every day. We didn't meet in the office till 11 and there we would have kind of a, a goal setting, team meeting kind of thing. And we would look at the map, we'd look at neighborhoods from you know the top of the map and if there's a dirt spot in the neighborhood, it's a good neighborhood. It's a new neighborhood, hasn't been hit really. Even if it has been hit, there's some neighborhoods I would go in. I'd have 13 clients, I'd come out with seven more just mm -hmm. because of the buzz you could get going. But it was good, you know, a good 12 weeks Compared to the rest of your life, it's a good investment to make because I learned that at the door or anything, you're always going to get a fake objection. There's always going to be some objection that has nothing to do with the real reason of why they don't want you at their door. It might be that they've had a bad experience with a door-to-door -door salesman or that they really are satisfied with what they have, but they just haven't been, I guess, taken around to see the real problems that they do have. And I guess... The hardest thing about it was realizing that even these big business guys like you know Donald Trump, they're nervous. Everyone's nervous. And if you're not nervous, there's something wrong with you. Mm -hmm. You know, I played football my whole life and before every game I still had, you know, that bug in my stomach just waiting for the first hit or whatever it is. And at the door, it's the same way with the doors, it's kinda of like you restart every time and it's a different situation. You kinda of have to take the time and like breathe and like listen and figure out exactly what that customer needs you to show them and hmm. most of the time the people did have they had black widows it's probably north carolina one of the biggest biggest pest cities in the world and a company would come and service the person two days before and they would be like no my company's here i've had the same guy for six years and most of the time they weren't doing their job just because they mm. were so loyal to the brand, I guess, mm. that they had. And I guess the hardest part about being a new company and being with Clear Defense and being a young salesman is you have to show why you are valuable to the person. You have to really just diagnose everything in the situation at the door. So, so <clears throat> what, what did you learn in this experience? Everyone has a problem that can be brought to their attention. Everybody, no matter what, like now, you could say something, you could try to sell me a brand new pair of shoes and I would say my shoes are fine, but if you asked me to pull my shoes up on the table and you pointed out something wrong with them, it would kind of spark like a, ah, oh, like maybe this guy's right, like he knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And I guess the thing you have to do with a customer is, I only had 10 minutes, that's literally what you have, you have an e-pitch, and in that 10 minutes if I didn't see an Ohio State hat right here to talk about football, if I didn't see, you know, the, was it a camo with airplanes? If I didn't pick up something off that relate to the person to where they trusted me, then there was no sale, no matter what. So you first had to build, build trust. trust. Always, you have to build trust. You have to, mm -hmm. you have to do something to relate to the customer to where they'll trust you because there's, I mean, there's billions of people in the world. Why would I listen to this guy? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. first, build trust. You got to, And me, I'm just, I'm very, at the door, I was just like, hey, I'm Jay Craycraft, Clear Defense Pest Control, I'm the neighborhood bug guy. Sometimes I would throw in, I was like, yo, I'm a college intern, I'm a sales major, just anything to kind of lighten the mood and let them know why I was there because any door-to-door -door sales, it's not outdated, but it's still people have the internet and all that stuff and they want to do their research and there's always, like I said, always an excuse. Whether it's the husband's not home and if the husband's not home, you kind of have to like fight towards it. Like if someone said, well, my husband's not home, I can't make a buying decision and I would just kind of throw up Come on now, I'm like, you look like the the boss around here. So you kind of have to first identify the need, build the trust, and then, or not, build trust, identify the need, and then there's more like relations stuff going back. It's like a cycle to the sales. Hmm. So, well, hmm. how did this experience shape your view of you as a salesperson? I can do anything now. Just go into 120 doors. Some days you get 120 no's. That's just how it was, you know. Like they say, Rome wasn't built in a day. Each sale is an individual accomplishment. And the way I took it, even if I didn't get the sale, it was like a success in my book. Because like they say, like nine out of ten businesses fail within the first ten years. I mean, that it's with anything. Like football teams, they'll, they'll lose. You know, when they first start, they lose games. And as a salesman, you lose. You lose more times than you win, but it's the one win that kind of 
keeps you going. And with commission jobs or even salary jobs where you have to meet a certain salary cap, each sale is just kind of like a relief. And it kind of pushed me, it like buzzed me a little bit. And like, if I can go to a guy and for 10 minutes I can take, not take his money, but offer him my service, take a substantial amount of money, then I'm okay with failing 10 times if I can get that one. So I've kind of learned that you're not gonna hit every single time. No matter what, you're not gonna hit every, like, there's, it's just impossible. Unless you're some master salesman and you've been blessed with some type of gift, but most of us aren't. So, so tell me, did the results that you achieved meet your initial expectations? They're far beyond. I, I wouldn't, I didn't, obviously, I didn't make $40,000. Like in my head, I was like, oh, I'm going to summer make $40,000. But because I went to every single door and I woke up and I just, you know, pushed the pavement and I did cold calls. Like, you know, cold calls are the toughest thing. Because of that, I'm going to make $40,000 somewhere else. Maybe more, probably more than $45,000, $40,000 just because of what I experienced there. Because it's, I mean, I would get rejected 40 times a day. Mm -hmm. Hard rejections, not please leave, like slam the door, we're going to do this, you're this, and so that's, that's how it kind of goes, that's how it goes, you got to, it made me stronger, I was a, I was a you know, pretty strong person as it is, but I got my nose bloody, and you just got to wipe it off and rebuild your confidence, and you know, you've got, I got 40 yards to get to the next house, even if they did see this door get slammed, I've got to re-establish myself, mm -hmm. the next house, the next house, the next house, the next house, so. So how much money did you make? I made every 16, well, you don't make money if you don't make sales, and I figured that out quick. First two weeks, I didn't make any sales, so I was calling my financial advisor, like, hey, I need some cash, which is fine, it's a summer job, I knew that it would take some time to get rolling. Once I did commit myself, and I started, you know, I got the first sale, I was like, all right, this week I'm gonna get a paycheck. And so I, think I hit four sales every week to hit like the eight sale in the mm -hmm. 16 days, so I hit, I would get draws, $500 draws every two weeks, mm -hmm. and then, we had incentives based off our sales. So if you were the first, one day, he, John Mark, he sent out a text. He's like, hey, first of two sales, 40 bucks. I got my first sale, first door. Second door, second sale. I called John Mark. I was like, I got two. I ended up getting <laughs> four that day. My partner got three. So we get cash bonuses as well. And then one day, if we hit the first, or whoever got the first sale, if you had one sale that day, you get to throw a dartboard, a dart at the dartboard, cash incentive. Just, there's a lot of cash incentives because it's we're a commission job, but I get my payout in November, and I, I think I hit 37 sales, which is not bad. You know, 37 cool. hit 37 sales. I think I hit 50, lost about 13, had some cancels. Like there's okay. always cancels in there, so about 37 sales. I my goal was 120, but once I got there, I realized a little less realistic. But I stuck it out. That's all that meant. 12 weeks. So that generated how much income to you for the uh, summer? I got by, and then I, I they took my rent out of the check, so mm -hmm. I, in November I get a 70% payout, February 30% payout, so I think I made about, through the summer, four grand, probably. Four grand. Yeah, okay. let's, say, let's say four or five grand. Wait, okay. And I got three credit hours, I take away more sales experience, and but like, I've got, I got six job offers at the door, just like not, like distinct job offers, but like, hey, here's my card, keep up with me till May. <laughs> For people you call them. Yeah, people I, I sold to, so I wow. had, I had one from IBM, Griffles, which is a pharmaceutical rep company, Northwestern Mutual. I'm trying to think. There's, I have all the cards. I don't have all the cards. But yeah, so job offers just came in. So now I'm sending out my resume to these people. I had people cry at the doors with me. Just, and I don't know. Just I would just relate to them and you know kill their bugs and make friends. And I just built. I don't know, it's like I'm, this was the biggest resume builder I've ever had. Hmm. It was this summer. Because the guy, people at the door, I would have guys that would wave me off, but they would say, hey, I respect what you do, and I used to do that. And most of these guys were in, you know, the fancy cars and the suits, and they just, they had done what I'd done, and they kind of respected it. People would get bottled of water, bottles of water. Mm -hmm. Some people throw bottles of water, mm -hmm. just depending on where you were and the type of people you were around. But 